Golf players in 17th century Scotland were the first to hone their game by using differently shaped clubs for specific tasks. Today, you use what's called a putter to gently roll the ball into the hole using the fewest number of strokes. The club's high-tech, streamlined design is crucial to any golfer's putting strategy. This company uses a robotic tester to spot-check its putters for quality. The club passes if the balls roll along a straight line into the hole. That means the putter's striking with just the right impact. Production begins with bars of aluminum, a metal that's lightweight and easy to sculpt. A bandsaw slices them into 11 centimeter long pieces. Each piece will become a putter head, the part of the club that hits the ball. A computer-guided cutting tool sculpts the heads by shaving away up to a third of the aluminum. The machine first mills one side of the head into tiny steps. Another cutting tool then shapes this area into a smooth curve. The process takes 10 minutes. Then the four-sided platform revolves and the cutter begins working on the next putter head. Another milling machine carves blocks of copper nickel alloy into what's called the insert. This part will fit into a cavity in the putter head, making the area that strikes the ball firm yet resonant. It's why the golfer feels the impact reverberate through the putter, what's known as feedback. This device performs random quality checks of the insert cavities in the putter heads. A vise holds the head as the probe gauges the cavity's width and depth. Next, these chunks of copper go into a chemical bath with putter head models made of different metals. The material from which a putter head's made determines the weight and feel of the club. This 10-minute bath removes any contaminants from the surface of the metals and coats the heads in copper. This ensures that the plating they're going to get will stick. After that, the heads are plated in a different metal. This determines how the club looks. For this, chunks of matte finished nickel go into a second chemical bath. They'll provide one of this company's four finishes, ranging from matte to shiny. During this 15-minute step, a mechanical arm occasionally shifts the rack to disperse the chemicals and thoroughly plate the heads. To fit the insert, a worker first positions the head in a vise. He applies four drops of epoxy glue inside the rim of the insert cavity. This provides additional bonding once they force the insert all the way in. After placing the insert in the cavity by hand, a worker uses a press to force it inside. They cover the press with paper so it won't scratch the insert, which must be flush with the surface of the head. Any air under the insert escapes through a hole underneath, where they'll insert the club shaft. A worker first applies glue inside the hole. Then he inserts the shaft and secures it to a template with rubber bands. The shaft is made of stainless steel. They usually come in standard lengths of 84, 86 or 88 centimeters. They're set at the angle most players prefer. The next step is to mount a hand grip at the top of the shaft. First, a worker wraps the top in double-sided tape. Then he pours water over the tape to dilute the glue on its surface. This will enable the grip to slide on more easily. He pours water inside the grip as well. The grip is a rubber sleeve that's 25 centimeters long. Once lubricated, it shimmies over the shaft for a snug fit that lasts up to three years. He lines up the flat part of the grip at a 90 degree angle with the flat part of the putter head. This helps the player strike the ball properly. Next, a worker colors the club's engraved logo. Using a tiny nozzle, she applies minute amounts of epoxy paint inside the grooves of the design. She controls the amount of paint with a foot pedal that releases pressurized air into the nozzle. This company makes putter heads in some fairly luxurious materials, including beryllium copper. That one's for players wanting a club with a softer feel and who don't mind paying up to $500 to get it. <laughs>